Today, I'm going to be telling you guys tips on how to make better mountain bike videos to go on YouTube. I'll be giving you guys some pretty basic, helpful knowledge of the types of shots and when to use each one. I'll be going over first person, third person, and all the types of shots and angles. So first things first, I'll go over first person shots. A first person shot is mounted directly to the rider and the camera is seeing the front of the trail. This right here is a first person shot because it's mounted to my chest. First person shots can also be mounted to helmets, shoulders, and practically any other spot on you or your bike. This right here is an example of a third person shot. A third person shot shows the rider's full body and has many specific types. In general, a third person shot is from the perspective of another person filming you, which it is. These should make up 60 to 70% of your videos because they're more entertaining to watch. So I'll start with talking about first person shots. As I said earlier, a first person shot is filmed from the rider and you're seeing the trail in front of you. Usually, I like to attach the mount to my chest because it gives you a way more realistic view of what's actually happening. If you're mounting the GoPro to the top of your helmet, this is fine, just make sure you don't see too much of your helmet. A lot of people use the underside of their helmet, but I don't have a helmet that can support it, therefore I can't use it. But I have heard that that footage is really good. The chest mount also significantly decreases the amount of wind noise you'll hear. Just take a look. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference between the two. Since I'm not talking about first person right now, I should remind you guys that you need to alternate between third person and first person, because you don't want one half of the video to be all of one shot and the other to be the other type. Okay, so now we'll move on to action camera setup on your chest mount. So first, you should make sure if you're using a chest mount to put your GoPro upside down. If you're worried about flipping your footage around, don't worry, the GoPro does it for you. If you put your GoPro right side up, there aren't any real benefits. Riders will just be looking at your top tube the whole time, which viewers don't want to look at. The reason is this. Since your GoPro camera is right side up, it'll be pushing against you, and that's going to cause it to look at your top tube. In reality, you do stand up when you're riding, and when your GoPro is right side up, it'll keep pushing against you, and you won't be able to move it back. That's the main misconception here. Now moving on to GoPro angles, I don't really have any suggestion. I think it's a variety, and different riders like different setups. For me, I tend to usually set it up at about 85% of the trail, and the other 15% being your handlebars and top tube. If it seems really hard for you to find your ideal angle, don't worry, you'll definitely get used to it. Now, I pretty much get my position right on the first try, just because I pretty much ride with a GoPro every time I go to Duthi or anywhere else. So the main takeaways from this are that you should find an angle that suits you, and you should flip your GoPro upside down. Okay, so now we'll transition to third person shots. These are a variety, and I'll spend time talking about each. In movies, photographers use six different types of camera shots. These are the extreme long shot, long shot, full shot, medium shot, close up shot, and extreme close up. An extreme long shot shows the setting, or where you are. These are often used by drones or bird's eye view angles, but I think it's very rarely used in a mountain bike video. In a 5 minute mountain bike edit, you should only use this shot once or twice, or for the intro and outro. So next up is the long shot. A lot of your third person shots should be taken up by a long shot because it's the most entertaining to watch and it also shows enough of the setting and the riders so that you know what's happening. These next few shots are all long shots so see if you notice a pattern. A long shot can either be focused on the riders or the setting, or both. In mountain biking, it's mostly always the riders but it might consist of a little bit of a jump. So next up is a full shot. This train down the last jump of Flying Squirrel is a great example of one because it shows the jump and a little bit of the characters. Unlike the long shot, the full shot only shows one jump, while the long shows many. Full shots and long shots should take up pretty much all of your third person footage. A medium shot is next up. Usually, medium shots aren't actually used in mountain bike videos that much because it shows a character's waist and up. I have a few medium shots such as this one, but they eventually fade. If you had a YouTube channel more based off lifestyle, such as Seth's Bike Hacks, that would definitely be a case where you could use more medium shots, but in my case, I don't use them. Next up on the agenda is the close-up shot. These never show the rider, and it's always nature, such as this shot right here. 
I sometimes use these and they are useful in some cases. Though close up shots may seem cool, the main thing that I see wrong with a lot of people's mountain bike videos are that they use way too much of it. You don't want to have majority of nature shots in a 5 minute mountain bike video. So lastly, we'll transition into the extreme close up shot, which I've never used before, just because you need a really high quality camera. This is an example of one that a photographer actually took of leaves at Duthie Hill, and as you can see, it's really high quality. If you have a camera that's high quality and can support this, I'd say go for it, but remember not to use it too much like the long shot. So now I'll quickly inform you guys about the types of angles that you can use. These are the bird's eye view, high angle, eye level, and low angle. A bird's eye view angle is always above the action and it's an elevated side view, which means it's up and to the side. Then there's the eye level, which is useful in a lot of cases. I use these a lot as it shows the jumps directly from the side and it shows you arcing over the crest. This angle looks really cool if you do it right, so I suggest that you guys go out and experiment. And finally, there's the high angle shot and low angle shot. The high angle shot is like a bird's eye view, except it's not to the side, it's just directly above and it points down at the action. A lot of drones film these and they are pretty cool. This right here is a low angle. As you can see, I'm jumping over the action and it's the exact opposite of a high angle. So right now, I'll recap what we've learned, and then I'll make a short one minute edit as an example. So first, we learn the difference between a first person shot, which is mounted to the rider, and a third person shot, which is filming you off camera. I taught you to use these interchangeably, as you don't want to use too much of each. Then, I informed you guys on the types of shots, and how often you should use each one, along with its significance. Then I taught you guys the angles, along with when to use each one. Pretty much the most important part of filming a mountain bike video is not using too much of each shot. You want a nice mix. So now I'll show you that edit that I made, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.